there's a huge disturbing emotional element to this movie that they cause here and that's because of this family that they're dealing with mm -hmm. you know uh the way they just go out and they do like like you see mom just trying to take some dirty clothes out there you yeah. know and they and, and they just messing with her man stealing her socks <laughs> well you might have a point <laughs> <laughs> Hey boys, look what I got. <laughs> and it's just one. That is still looking for the other one. <laughs> I did her a favor. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about that evil den. Rise. 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 People. I wasn't very excited for this. Not looking forward. Wasn't not, was not looking forward to this very much at all. And there's a reason for that. You see, let me go ahead and explain to you. See, the main reason is I am an evil dead fan. Mm -hmm. Evil dead. A deadhead. I'm a, I am an evil deadhead. <laughs> But I'm I'm more about that silly dead. Sure. More than that evil dead, you know? I'm more about all that slapstick and all that around and bouncing around the room and being just being just being stupid and goofy. <laughs> I mean, that alone right there. Because who's expecting something like that? I mean, I caught this I caught this movie, Evil Dead 2, on HBO when I was a kid. Uh huh. And I caught it a part where I saw a zombie dancing out in the graveyard. I'm like, what the hell is this? And then they just start doing stupid <laughs> stuff like this. And I was like, oh, this ain't scary. This is just dumb. In the best way, though. <laughs> I, that's a poster right there, yeah. man. I want that on my wall. Yeah, that is, that is the great Ash. Played by Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell, the great Ash, played by the great Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I saw this. I mean, it's it's a. Uh, I know we say this all the time, but it's a Looney Tunes cartoon with blood and gore. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious, man. It's fun. Even the 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 the, 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 the sequel to that, Army of Darkness, is not even really a horror movie. It's a it's a medieval fantasy comedy, mm -hmm. which I just love the. <laughs> I just love these movies, man, for how they've experimented. You have one that was a serious film, then you get this one that was a comedy, and then you get the the other one that's a fantasy comedy. I love that. Uh, so that probably had me have a bias against the 2013 Evil Dead that came out. Sure, you know because that played it that played it more straight. No. You don't understand. <laughs> And no, also, you don't understand. Yeah, you know, what, I understand. What, what made this work? <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I know a lot of people like this movie, so it's just personal with me. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I admittedly have a bias against this film because I just love the, the Evil Dead Two and Army of Darkness so much, and also this played a lot of fan service to those movies. Yeah, a lot of fan service. Um, it strips out the thing that makes those uh, mo movies unique or fun. Yeah. And by the time it's all said and done, I was like, did this have to be an Evil Dead? It could have been just anything. Yeah, well, it had to be Evil Dead so we could, you know, get a cameo of the chainsaw. <laughs> right. And the shotgun and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you know, that that is, that's just something with me, man. I'm too close with those other movies, so when I see something where they're just kind of regurgitating things just to get cheap applause from the audience, or genuine applause, you know, and that's my own, again, bias playing in there. I'm not too crazy about it. Uh, but that's why looking at this latest Evil Dead, Evil Dead Rise, the tone of the 2013 movie seems to be in this movie, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's light on comedy, Heavy on blood and gore. So will that affect how I see this latest version of Evil Dead? Call Evil Dead Rise. I'm going to go ahead and watch the trailer. Want to watch the trailer, Mark? Yeah, let's, let's watch, watch the trailer. trailer. Let's watch the trailer, y'all. Want to watch the trailer, y'all? Let's watch the trailer. And We we'll, should watch the trailer. We, Martin, you know what? I'm not gonna watch this trailer, man. Let's go and get it. No, <laughs> tell me what to do. <laughs> Pull some daffy duck shit off me. No, we'll watch the trailer, y'all, and then we'll come back 
Unfortunately, Martin did not see the movie because they did not give us a screening. They did it at South by Southwest. So I said, you don't get no more. Right. But I saw it, and I'll give you my review. And I'll try to do you proud, Martin. I hope you can. You know, I'll represent as much as I can. Let's so watch the trailer. We'll be right back with the review. Oh, you always found time for me. Shit. <laughs> she was like, I wish this bitch would just go. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna sit up here and play dead till she till she gets out of here. <laughs> Jesus, I hate this girl. <laughs> Mom? Mommy's with the maggots now. I'm not gonna lie, man. I haven't seen a a trailer for a horror movie that has scared me in a long time, but that one looks pretty horrific. So this this scared you? Yeah. Well, you can see it's already doing some different things. So, Evil Dead is known mostly for the cabin in the woods. Mm -hmm. The yeah. spooky cabin in the woods. And of course, when you have a spooky cabin in the woods, the spook's gonna come out, you know? <laughs> why not? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I mean, why have a spooky cabin, man? Uh, but you know, when we think of cabin in the woods, we almost think of, you know, Evil Dead. Right. They're almost synonymous with each other right now. So you can see they've already <laughs> done something, a little different right here you know instead of a cabin in the woods we have an apartment high-rise in the middle of the city mm -hmm. where you think you're safe where you think you're safe so that you know the the plot here deals with said family living in said apartment high-rise in the city and one day um you know the sun's going out for pizza and then a earthquake happens and parking lot you know ends up getting all wrecked up and everything oh uh, when you know a bunch of rubble there's the Book of the ne Necronomicon, <laughs> Book of the Dead. <laughs> it just just happened to be buried on the parking lot. Just right there. <laughs> yeah. That's what they put in. So, of course, being, you know, dumb white people in a horror movie, they're like, oh, what's this? Let's take this home and read it. <laughs> so, so the son takes it home, reads it, and, of course, when you start reading the Book of the Dead, then you start to release the dead are, in this case, in this lore of the evil dead, deadites. Mm -hmm. And the deadites are just there to wreak havoc, just to fuck your day up. <laughs> You know, back to what you said, that that book is pretty cool with the with the skin binding on it and all. Oh yeah. If you found that, you you telling you really wouldn't pick it up and flip through it. Oh, we'd be fucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you'd be like, what the? Ooh, this is bad. What, what is this? So what does this say again? Oh, Martin, we we all like if I found that right now, Martin, check this out. The dead shall rise. And <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. yeah man, you got there. If I if I found a book like that. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying like I I wouldn't put this as a exclusively a stupid white people this is what they do i'm like i feel like almost anybody would go check this out yeah no you know you got you you'd have one stupid negro right here <laughs> that should be prominently featured <laughs> hey y'all I, I have it on the show i know you have it on the show let me read it out loud to the audience <laughs> yeah. hey chat check this out <laughs> hey y'all let me hold on let me just get all the blood off this and now the threat old ross bethany <laughs> yeah, yeah. huh. look what i found y'all <laughs> let me read a chapter y'all real quick oh martin is in Polish. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, you know, this uh, the 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 evil is unleashed in this apartment, and so, you know, uh, when I talk about this as being set in an apartment in the middle of the city, that is one of the biggest things that set sets this apart as far as it's doing its own thing. That's the first thing that says that this is not trying to just regurgitate. Yeah. What Sam Raimi did with the cabin in the woods theme. You know, they are actually doing, they say they're doing a different chapter here. They, it does seem like they are. Or, rather, this seems like this is a, uh, a reboot. But a reboot in the sense of, they, again, they're not trying to uh, bring in uh, a lot of overly familiar elements and icons yeah. from, uh, from, the, from the last movies. Again, just to get people to be like, oh, I recognize that. Mm. Oh, you brought back that. They're not doing that here too much. Okay. You know, this feels, this feels like a reboot in... The very positive sense is that if you're gonna reboot it, you don't always have to like just, you know, uh, remake All to the a callbacks. T. Yeah, you don't have to literally <laughs> remake everything. Mm -hmm. You know, take the theme and then go off and start doing your own thing with it. You know, and and, and they do listen. They do uh, they do pay homage to uh, some of the things that we've seen in the last films. Like this part right here, it opens up with the cabin in the woods. And oh, yeah, okay. And that's, okay. That's what yeah, that's and I, yeah, and yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it no, it definitely opens up with, uh, and that's how they're trying to get people uh, t 
to the movie because mm. that's you know listen you know and it works as we've seen with Super Mario and anything else out there where people love people love nostalgia people love recognizing what they what they really enjoyed or what they grew up with or what they love and you've seen this trailer right here they show you a cabin in the woods. So right. we think that this is where this is going to be and the uh, the majority of this is going to happen here. Nah, nah, that's kind of a bait and switch right there. Okay. The, they put that shit in the trailer to get you. Uh -huh. In fact, I think they shot that for the beginning of the movie just so they have a reason to put it in the trailer and get your money up in there. So you going in, looking at that, oh, we're back in the woods. I love that. All oh, the, you know, the Book of the Dead is here. So you falling for that right there and then seeing that that's not what it's about. Is that a good thing? You know, because just because somebody does something differently doesn't always mean it's good. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, it's not long before we leave that cabin and we go into uh, we go into uh, uh, the city. Now, is that a good thing? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. Uh oh. It you know if uh, if you were looking for you know again a sort of a more literal remake of some of the movies that you love in, a, in the in the Evil Dead series, <clears throat> especially with one and two, then maybe not. But if you were looking for one of the most fucking demented movies, <laughs> okay, this, 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 this I, I, I could say this movie's messed up. I could say it's disturbing. I could say it's shocking in some places. This is fucked up, man. Okay? <laughs> okay, okay. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I, I, excuse my French. Excuse moi. But this is fucked up, this movie right here. And I'm saying that in a good way. Because it's not just messed up in the, in the sense that, oh, you know, we got more gore. Or we got more violence. We got more, way more buckets of blood. That's not the case here, man. Yeah, it looks more psychological. This is, yes. This is one of the most demented ass horror movies I've seen in a while because of how ruthless these goddamn demons are. Mm. These demons here, man, they, they like I said, they they're not nice. They just <laughs> they're, not, <laughs> they're not nice, man. They open that book up and those demons, they're just there to ruin your day. And once they're done with your day, we want to mess up your life. Wow. And not it ain't just enough to mess up your life. Where are your kids at? Oh. Where are your mom at? <laughs> <laughs> You got uncle, you got any any any, uh, any uncles and aunties around here? You know, I'm gonna mess them up too, man. Where your cousin at? <laughs> Shit, where that fucking dog at? <laughs> you know, it's, they are here to like really. They said in the trailer, the way that they thrive, the way that these the, the deadites, yeah, the way they get by, you know, I guess the way that they keep continuing to uh, to to exist is that they cause chaos. Oh, they feed off the chaos. They feed magic. off the chaos. They feed off the chaos of human suffering, mm -hmm. which they take a lot of glee in. Mm -hmm. Just way too happy to be doing this mess, yeah. man. But it's it's uh. So they're doing stuff like like taking your socks, like one sock out of the dryer, so you can never get them matched. Boy, I can see that you've lived an easy life. <laughs> Wow, if that's fuck, man, if, if missing a sock is fucking up your life, boy, don't you, you know, ever? You look everywhere and it makes you late for work. Martin, don't you ever have no problems then? <laughs> you know what I did, God, I, you know what I'm gonna get you for your for your birthday. I'm gonna get you that. I'm gonna get you the book of the Necro Comic Con or whatever it is, the ne the Negro Comic Con. <laughs> I'm gonna get you that book so you can realize what real suffering and stress is like, because it's uh, they they cause a lot of. Physical suffering, yeah. But there's a lot of emo not 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 just like uh, psychological, but, but a lot of emotional. Yeah. There's a huge disturbing emotional element to this movie that they cause here, and that's because of this family that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and that's really the most messed up part of the movie. The way they just go out and they do like, like you see, mom just trying to take some dirty clothes out there, you yeah. know, and they and, and they just messing with her, man. They're stealing their socks. <laughs> well, you might have a point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys, look what I got. <laughs> and it's just one. That bitch is still looking for the other one. <laughs> I did her a favor. <laughs> nah, man, they, uh, nah, they, the, the, what they do to destroy this poor family. Yeah. That's that that is the real it's not just a matter of being scared. It's 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 heartbreaking. Yeah. Was, yeah, they I, I mean, I feel bad for this family cuz they weren't bothering anybody, man. And we're talking about a single mom with three kids and these are not bratty kids, man. Yeah, these kids are good. That's enough in itself. Yeah. This these kids are, these kids are good. 
Oh, that, that's that's heartbreaking because nobody writes kids as good anymore. They're teenagers. Not one fuck you, mom, mm -hmm. or shut up, mom, or why I have to do this, or what I have to look at my, what what I have to look after my brother. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You know, none of that, man. Yeah. They're respectful. They don't like a lot of things that are going on, but they're cool with it, and they understand that. The real cool thing about it is that they they understand that uh, they understand that mom's going through it bad, cause mom uh, uh and that's that's an Australian actress right there that plays mom uh, Ellie, played by Alyssa Sutherland. Um, the the husband then left the family. The man of the house to just abandon them, mm -hmm. so they kind of going through it and trying to get by the best way they can, and you know, and and then this the demon's gonna come in and just fuck everything up even even more, man. But <clears throat> you know, they that's the thing about this. They weren't bothering anybody. Yeah, you know that that, at, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, they they were not doing the dumbass white people in horror movies uh, uh, stereotype. Mm -hmm. They weren't doing that at all. You know, they would they were home chilling. <laughs> Minding their own business. Yeah. You know, and that, they weren't out there going into places they weren't supposed to, provoking evil, mm -hmm. you know, provoking ghosts. They weren't doing that. They were just at home doing that thing, man. Uh, they were about to get some pizza. You know, mom and the kids, I tell you, they're going through it right now. Uh, so uh, Aunt Beth comes over. Aunt Beth comes over to, to to try to make make everybody feel better, cheer everybody up. She brought gifts, and they, you know they were gonna they were gonna sit up and sit, sit up there and, and watch a movie and just try to make mom happy, and then uh, uh, and then these these demons get released and just wreck havoc on what what was a a family of very nice people, and that's one of the things that I think is uh, is is effective here that these people were just you know in between the family kind of. Emotionally going through it already, and them just being decent, it just it's, it really hurts to see them go through this. Yeah. Check out what I got your dad. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh, did I uh, <laughs> say something wrong? <laughs> oh, that's bad. The whole family just clammed up. Yeah, she has no idea what's happening, oh, man. Oh, boy. What's going on now? Yeah, you. Look, <laughs> wow, what, that 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 expression should tell you. She's everything. like, you know, this is why you call first. <laughs> you oh, come she, oh, she just dropped by. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm making oh, up something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, and this is for dad. <laughs> was like, wow. Can I see that? Uh, <laughs> uh, she should have brought dad grass instead, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> dad grass. Every now you would imagine how everybody would have been excited and happy. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, but Dadgrass, we gotta do a quick word from our sponsor. It's gonna be very quick. Dadgrass brings us this part of the show. It sponsors this part of the show right here, and Dadgrass is something that I've been talking up because, as you know, I'm not a big smoker. I don't, you know, I don't do a lot of, uh, I don't do a lot of the uh, the Mary Jane out there. Mm -hmm. Can't handle it, as you know, as, I, as I've told you. Plenty of times, but that's why dad grass is so good for people like myself because it is legal, organic, smokable hemp and it relaxes your body and your mind without making you stupid, right? Like, I have a tendency to get more like you don't need no weed for that. <laughs> <laughs> that I, stupidity is 100% organic. I, I didn't say nothing, <laughs> you don't have to say it. Uh, uh, reason why is because they're very low in THC. And they're very high in the CBD. So you can enjoy this with a clear head. And they have a lot of products out there now. You know, they, they started out with products that you smoked, but now they got, they're jumping on the edibles. They got gummies out there for people. Let me see, are these the gummies here? Yep. Look at those delicious squares right there. They have tinctures, which they had before, which is what I was actually using mm -hmm. a lot. You know, you, you take, like those? Yeah, I, they, I do actually. I do. I used to, uh, at night, to help me sleep a little bit, I used to put a little bit under my tongue. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was good. And didn't it didn't make me, like, sleepy, sleepy tired. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we just talked about this. <laughs> I'm looking here. You know, we talking about how Mojo's, like, just all intense all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, I'm about to get his ass some, uh, 
some of these CBD dog treats over here. Yeah, he needs that. Yeah, no, he does need that. Look, look at that little little CBD bones over here. <laughs> oh, look at that, look look at that dog. It's feeling good right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dog baby. Is chill. Mm. Dog grass. <laughs> yeah. Just keep rubbing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I've used a lot of these. I'm actually, I, I keep saying it. I, I'm really, I'm going to get these for the dog, man. Both of them, because Pixie can't stand it when it rains. And I don't see how that mellows them out. They need it. But, yeah, if, you've, if anything I'm telling you, man, if you're like me and this appeals to you, go ahead and try it, man. You know, get all that mellow goodness. And you don't always have to have the smoke to do it. So whether you're looking for just a nice buzz you're looking for a new way to relax, go ahead and try dag grass to put you in that euphoric mood. Here's something else that's going to put you in a good mood right here. 20% off your first order. If you go to daggrass.com slash toasted, that's D-A-D-G-R-A-S-S dot com slash toasted, T-O-A-S-T-E-D. Put that in and get 20% off your first order. I want to thank dag grass for sponsoring this portion of the show, and I want to thank you out there. He said, like, damn, you need some dad grass bear. Look at you. <laughs> got, the, got them shakes. Try to talk about mojo. Look at you. <laughs> you. Thank you out there for your support. Um, <clears throat> and I tell you, man, uh, you know, I, I don't know if this is a good thing or, or a bad thing with the movie because it, it, it really does jump right into it. Like I said, it, it, it is pretty much an earthquake happens and they find <laughs> the, okay. the book of the Necro Necrocomicon in a parking lot. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, so it, it, was it buried underground? I and guess they, it was and buried. They built a building on, uh, on top uh, of it. It was somebody's trunk or something. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no right. it was buried underground. Okay. Yeah. So this, it's almost. I would say that that's. It's it it it's, it's a weak setup, but it's okay because it gets us into the story. Right. But it's just kind of like, all right, what can we do to find it? Oh, just shake it up real <laughs> quick, you know, <laughs> make an earthquake happen, mm -hmm. uh, and then the book comes up from the rubble. So it jumps into it very quickly, but it doesn't dwell on it, and the movie moves fast enough to where you don't have to really think about it that much. Yeah. So it, it, that's okay. What what I want to talk about how this really sets itself apart from the other movies, and like I said, man, it's the it's the it's the psychological horror here but also the emotional horror man see the thing with this that i found frightening is that two things people being taken over by something and being aware of it for a little bit and just having no control over it. yeah mom gets possessed immediately by these deadites and she's still oh, for just a little while before she's completely consumed she's aware of what's happening to her that's horrifying yeah but you know, the deadites are pretty much at some point in the movie, they're using the body of these kids' dead mom. Yeah. That dead mother to like to to emotionally manipulate them. Mm -hmm. Especially the little one, man. Cause a little stupid ass is vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's opening the door for him and everything. But you know, all these kids have to sit here and see their mom just uh and this is the, this is the it's scary and sad because they see their mom being taken over by this by this evil but they get to see her in the last moments where she's like trying to let them know like hey look i still love you please don't let this demon get y'all oh wow because i don't want to i don't want y'all to think it's me yeah <laughs> you know yeah. please yeah. save my babies it's me. <laughs> don't let it take my babies yeah good luck because i'm one of the things this, this movie makes clear from the beginning is that we're taking everybody. Oh, yeah, the one of the things that this movie wants you to know, we don't give a fuck about kids. <laughs> we don't care about your kids. We don't care about these kids. <clears throat> it's um, anyone can go at any time. Oh, wow. Anyone. Anyone. <laughs> you know, we the, age don't anyone? matter. A anyone. <laughs> anyone. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> they don't care. That adds to the suspense of it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and I, and I, look, I don't want to see kids be tortured and killed and, and murdered and maimed and everything. But if you go that far, I mean, all bets are off. True. You know, it may, makes me think that anything goes. Right, right. You don't want to see it. But if it's happened, you got to give respect to it. Yeah, exactly. And for what these kids, for, for what these kids have to deal with, uh, they're great, man. These kids are, these, these kids are great actors, man. 
because uh, you know, and the whole cast, the the whole cast delivers. I mean, there are several actors who have to play dual roles. Oh, you know, they they have to be the terrified, helpless victim at one point. Oh, and and then they have to be they have the to be the eye. evil spirit. That oh. <clears throat> no, sorry, excuse me. The evil spirits coming out of me. They have to be the they have to be the evil that victimizes people later. Yeah, and you know, they, and they're, they're all great, man. They're all everybody in this awesome. cast is great. You know, there's other people that you see here, like neighbors in the in, in the apartment complex and everything, that uh, you don't see here. But there are a lot of dual roles that have to be played. Uh, atmosphere helps out a lot with this. Uh, Except it's you know it's a little it's a little crazy with 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 this movie though it might be able taken a little bit too far because here's the thing it's impressive how they get a good claustrophobic feel from an apartment building in the middle of the city right you know uh, now some of it it might be a little bit forced because uh, you know looking at this it's like you know the the the, the atmosphere that they create is. Is nice. It works, but the, you know, the, in, in, a lot of it depends on a dark and gloomy and creepy atmosphere. But the thing is, it was dark and creepy and gloomy before the demons ever arrived. <laughs> before, <laughs> before that book ever got pulled up from underground, it was already. This is the place for us, boys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at this. It's like, are yeah. y'all conserving energy? What's up with this apartment building, <laughs> yeah, man? I was gonna ask. <laughs> Dracula had more light in this castle <laughs> than these people got in their apartment. It did make me think, oh, oh you, see, you said an earthquake, maybe they got their lights turned off. Man, no, there's a light back there. Oh, I thought it was a candle. Oh, okay. no, no, that's a light. No, get a ceiling fan with a light on it. Man, like, they got all these little mood lightings around the house. It's like, it gets like crazy dark in there. Uh-huh. Um, it's like, you know, it's, just, it's almost like, you know, cut off some goddamn lights. This is depressing. <laughs> now, you're right. That's why y'all getting attacked by demons. <laughs> They said, well, shit, this fits you. It's almost like you want us to be uh-huh. here. It feels warm and cold yeah. in here yeah. all this darkness. Shit, it's almost like y'all are, it's almost like you're trying to sell this place to us. Did your realtors do this? It's just, yeah, it's a, you see the candles are off and the lights are actually off. <laughs> yeah. The candles would help. <laughs> right, right. If they lit that up. Man, it's depressing, you know, but it's a movie thing. It's a movie thing that I'm a little picky about, but you might not be because it does look good. It does, it looks very good. But you know, it's a movie thing where they, you know, to create mood, you know, they make things look like a spook house, like I say, before the spooks ever get there. Yeah. You know, it's it's not realistic, but stylistically, it, it's it it's works. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they, uh, you know, they also create a lot of claustrophobia with this because this family's trapped, man. You know, they are... Elevator not working. Uh, yeah, the elevator... Well, no, the elevator is... No, the elevator is working. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, this this is a... This is a, a this, this is a, this, this is an under siege bottle film. Mm-hmm. So you have a limited number of characters in a tight space, but outside there's more deadites waiting on them. Oh, because anybody who knows Evil Dead, you know that this evil spirit, or the, it's the spirit disease, of the deadites, they 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 pass like an infection, mm-hmm. like a you know like and, and, and it's and it's instant, and so once it starts passing to other people. Then they start growing in numbers, and so they can't leave the, the the apartment. But then you know they start finding a way to get in too. You know, so it's uh, you know with them with them being trapped inside, uh, that creates a lot of suspense too. And that's the truly the big biggest thing that works right here too is that you know we were talking about the other day with the Exorcist. Scariest thing about that is that it happened in somebody's safe place, their yeah. home. Now we're in the middle of the city. We're in an apartment complex. We ain't even in a house. You know, not like we, I can even see this probably happening in the suburbs a little bit. But this is a, you know, these are people stacked on top of each other. There's no way that it should be that easy to get to us. But it does happen. And once it gets there, uh, it feels even creepier and scarier and more claustrophobic because, you know, this is supposed to be their home. That's why it's sad. That's why it's infuriating. It's like, man, these people were at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can I can understand if they went to your cabin, right, and and started reading through your diary and your books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but you know, they were they were at home on their own business, uh, which and, and 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 it lets you know like no one's safe from these things. Yeah. Especially when they start affecting other apartment complexes or other uh, other other, other, other apartments. Yeah, because I guess that's part of. Why you f- would feel safe? You're in the middle of the city. There's people around. If something happens, you could run to somebody and say, "Please help me." Yeah. And yeah. I guess if they're gonna affect the p- infect the people around you, then 
you don't really have that anymore. Matter of yeah. fact, they're, they're a liability. Yeah, there's the the effects are pretty cool. By the end, it's just it's just body is just melting into each other. It's, and it's it, and again, and it's just no one's safe. It's completely tragic, but it looks kind of cool. But you know, by the and the way that they that they just find that they, they find ways to make these uh these family members suffer, man. I mean, the way they start taking some of them out yeah. is really gruesome. And it's just hard, you know, and it's crazy knowing like, wow, you mutilated the shit out of that body and it's going to come back, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah, so by the end of it, it's just, it. by the, by, when we get to, uh, you know, where only the last few remain and all these other deadites are trying to chase them, it goes nuts. I mean, it's it's freakish. Okay. What they do with these creatures, man. Uh, I'm impressed. And yeah, I no, that, seen it. no, it's it, it, it's 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 very impressive how this stands on its own, and that's why I, I mentioned this as a reboot because it's not 100% standing on its own, and if you look at it as a reboot, then that's cool because without spoiling anything, I will say that um, you know they do a little bit of fan service, mm-hmm. you know, certain predictable things pop up. Okay, uh, but if you look at this as a reboot that has to carry over some of those elements, mm-hmm. then it's it's not so... It doesn't feel like a cheap Easter egg anymore. Okay. It feels like it was actually, okay, you rebooted this. This is part of a big thing that's part of the uh, of this series. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to have it, and you're actually incorporating it into the story. Okay. So that's pretty cool right there. Um, <clears throat> and the movie does actually uh, do some, uh, some, some nods to other horror movies out there. There's a big one in here very big obvious one and again i like that they actually made it part of the story what they do here in this scene okay so how many of you look at this take a guess at where this reference comes from right here kool-aid star wars how did you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of people said it and you know it oh, yeah yeah you know what I, you're talking about I know, yeah I know. the shining yeah of course but somebody said something earlier and you were right uh this does start to have a feeling of aliens uh really yeah yeah because uh you know these creatures are going through the ventilator shafts, mm-hmm. but there's a moment where Aunt Beth and uh, the and the little girl here, the Caroline, uh, Cassie, Cassie played by uh, a young actress named Nell F- uh, Nell Fisher. Sorry, Nell Fisher. She they're kind of like uh, Ripley and Newt mm. in a way uh, near the end of it. You know, okay. Beth becomes very much a Ripley type character uh, without. You know, being too obvious. Yeah. And there are so many moments where she's trying to take care of uh, uh, of Cassie, and it feels it feels like it's right right out of Aliens. Lily Sullivan plays Beth, Aunt Beth, in here. So whoever called that out, that was a very good, uh, very good observation. Uh, I will say that the movie probably stops. You know, the sto- the, the 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 story that. They miss some really good emotional moments Mm -hmm. because I think they start really highlighting the gore and the blood more than the story itself. You know, I think that there was a missed opportunity, a small missed opportunity here where we could have got a a lot of emotion out of these kids really just being sad and upset and scared seeing their mom, you know, uh, uh, be taken over, knowing that, you know, they don't have her anymore, possibly. Um, I think the movie now the movie moves very brisk and it moves at a good pace so nothing I think anybody's going to notice and I think as far as being a movie that wants to uh, 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 please a bunch of horror fans and and fans of Evil Dead it's going to work on that level to know where no one's going to notice that they could have had more emotional moments in here and I don't think it should have a lot of those right there it's not a drama by any means but I just think there were some small moments that all right, we're definitely going to start showcasing the gore more than do some uh character story Mm -hmm. but that's fine that's that's fine right here uh and let's see how many human bodies we can mutilate mutilate badly with this with this movie right here that's what they start doing after a while i think uh to you know to a slight detriment but again the 
strongest point of this is how this is just they're able to make it definitely something that is recognized as an Evil Dead movie while seeming like almost a chapter in an anthology. Okay. Like if you did an, uh, and that's what I would like to see with this because that's what this felt like. It felt it felt like we were we were needing this. You know, let's see how the deadites react with different characters, different in, in different environments. Mm-hmm. You know, in different situations. Let's see how they destroy people's lives. Let's see how people fight back against this. You know, let's maybe you could have some that are more serious, maybe you could have some that are funny. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing an anthology where they would do something like that cuz that's what this felt like. And if you want to put the same icons in every one of them because now it's required it's like almost like a like if you want to work on an evil dead uh, uh story you have to include these three elements right uh-huh, here uh-huh. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but once you do that you can do whatever you want yeah mm-hmm. after that you can do whatever you want interesting so does this uh erase the the first two or three movies well no because it, like i said it stands on its own it's right. not it's not it's not a I don't look at it as a sequel. Mm-hmm. It's not a sequel at all. Mm-hmm. It's not even... I don't even think it's part of that universe with Ash. Okay. All right. No, that's why I say it's, okay. a, re, it's a reboot. Okay. You know, Ash is not in this. Oh, when you talked about the three elements, I thought maybe he was one of them. No, <laughs> no. He's, he, okay, just to let y'all know, it's not a spoiler. Ash is not in this at all, uh, which I think is a great thing. Um, but there are some other things in here. Like I said, you can take a guess. When I say three things, I already named one of them, mm-hmm. uh, the cabin in the woods, mm-hmm. you know, and we get that out the way very quickly. Mm-hmm. But there's other things in here that you'll recognize. Okay. But it, like I said, man, this is definitely something that is, it feels like, when they say it's a new fresh chapter, it feels like that. So, yeah, I enjoyed this, man. Right on. I enjoyed this. Well, uh, I've been hearing nothing but good things about it. No. Except for that one dude who lost his shit. Oh, that fucking dude, man. <laughs> I, he got paid to do this. <laughs> He, he made he, he, that, that was meant to go viral. I'm gonna be that conspiracy <laughs> guy. There was a guy that yelled out at this, and I and I, I'm ashamed to say that I was with him for a moment. There was a guy at South by Southwest who got up and yelled about this movie after they had to screen it. He was like, "This movie fucking sucks," and I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> not having seen it. Yeah, because I just didn't want them to do you know another Evil Dead movie like this. But uh, yeah. Uh, Bruce Campbell told him to get the fuck out. <laughs> Guy walked out huffing and puffing. Funny thing about it is somebody said that he was on his phone most of the time. Oh, yeah. They, they wasn't even watching the movie. Mm-hmm. But don't listen to that guy. Okay. Yeah, that's why I think that guy was paid to do that shit. You know. But then, I think somebody said he was walking down the street still ranting about he, it. Okay, so he was, you know what, maybe some homeless person let him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe <he> was, <laughs> y'all maybe maybe he was possessed by the Necrocomic. <laughs> Fuck your movie, Dead by Dawn, Dead by Dawn. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. I disagree with him greatly, though. Okay. Yeah, I, I would give this, uh, you know, just for how deep it is, man. I mean, I, it, ain't, it ain't deep. Let me just change that. It's not deep, but they do. It's, it's deeper than your average Sam Raimi uh, Evil Dead movie or remake with the emotional and psychological levels that they take it to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, give this a, I give this a high matinee. Huh. I was expecting a full price from everything um, uh, you said. I, I was thinking about going low full price with this, but yeah. like I said, I think uh, it's not, you know, it's... it's Heavy on character in the beginning, not so much in the end. Uh-huh. You know, like I said, I think they just where the, near the end is where they really start pointing out, like, see, West, we're, we're, we're Evil Dead movie. Oh, you know? okay. okay. So you know, it doesn't completely last on its own. But it's a very, very high mad name. If somebody gave it a full price, I'd see how they could do that. Mm. It's, it's 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 very good. Okay, it's very good. Okay. I enjoyed it, man. It's very solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For somebody who, especially somebody who was not looking forward to this, I found myself uh, pleasantly surprised. Good. Yeah, yeah, I I recommend it. I recommend it. And uh, you know what? And I'll tell you this: if I had watched this with the crowd, probably would have been a, a, a low full price for me, or a full price, you know. But I I did not get that opportunity. I did not have that privilege. So so yeah, just highly recommend.